The report basically says it's fact first fiction, lessons from the crack hysteria. And I remember I grew up in New York City in the crack epidemic. That's what we called it, the crack I know, epidemic. I know. And I, I, saw, I lived in the Bronx yeah. in, during the crack epidemic. Well, yeah. Like we, we saw it. We, we marched through the streets <laughs> against dealers. You know, I, I remember what, I remember how you're laughing, but it was a thing. It was such a thing. I mean, it was like a tornado came through the city. That's how it, that's how it was described. Look, I, that's how I, it I'm felt. with you, man. I mean, <laughs> the crack epidemic is the reason why I study drugs today, because of what you just described. I wanted to solve the problems faced by my community, and I thought crack was the number one problem. I mean, many of us in the country felt that way. I mean, it was so bad. In, I think, 1989, the L.A. Times ran a story where the NAAC, in Lackland, Florida, uh, teamed up with the Ku Klux Klan to rid the community of crack dealers. Now, the, the, the mission statement... <laughs> You're just like, whatever it takes. Yeah. The enemy of my enemy. Precisely. The mission statements of those groups are they're right. in conflict, right? But, but that's how we all got about crack cocaine. But the thing, you know, the thing is, is that we got hoodwinked. You know, it was a way not to deal with problems of the inner city, right. um, of urban areas. That would, that's what happens. I mean, crack was blamed for high unemployment rates. The highest unemployment rates we had in my time was in 1982, double digits for white people, and it's always twice that for black folks. Nobody remembered that. Nobody right. remembered right. that during the whole crack era, unemployment was never that high. And then the literature, I mean, what ended up happening was that there's a whole raft of literature after the kind of media hysteria in which it showed, for instance, crack babies, right? right. We, were all, we all knew about crack right. babies. Right. And it seemed, it did not seem crazy. It seemed right. fairly intuitive. Right. If you are pregnant, and you were smoking crack, that's gonna mess up your kid. Right. It turned out it wasn't necessarily messing up kids or no, not nearly to the extent that we thought it would, right? That's exactly right. And now, mind you, nobody is saying that people should go out and smoke crack during yeah. pregnancy. Right. But the point is, is that when, when the, all the evidence came out, the effects of crack cocaine or cocaine on, on a pregnant woman or the fetus was the same as the effects of tobacco on the fetus, exactly the same. And these kids, they might- I don't, You're saying that to me and I still don't believe it. Like, I understand. No, I'm just, I'm being totally honest here. Like, <laughs> like, I know you're saying that. I know that's what the literature, I've seen the citations in your book. I know that's the literature, but I, there's just part of me that's like, that cannot possibly be true. Yeah, you know, when, so when I get that a lot, as you know, and, 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 and I don't know what to say to that. I right, mean, yeah, I, yeah. I deal in evidence, and if everybody, one of the things that we want to, I wanted to do with the book was to increase the intellectual tone around discussions of drugs. But in order to do that, we all have to play by the rules of evidence. But if people are allowed to have their faith-based beliefs... Right, in which I just I say, can't, that's, that can't yeah, possibly be true, doctor. Yeah, I, I, can't, I can't do right. anything about that. I mean, and so I just... So I'm trying to speak to the people who believe in evidence. So one of the, and then we, well, one of the things I think that grows out of this is that we saw the, the, the hysteria around crack uh, led to real policy implications. For instance, yeah. most famously, the disparity in sentencing yeah. between cocaine, powder cocaine, and crack cocaine. The idea being that crack cocaine was a worse drug. Yes. And then there was a ton of studies and it turned out it just wasn't, right? That's right. I mean, it just, that was an invented distinction. Yeah, and we were all, now we are all outraged about this distinction that you just described. But but everyone we everyone subscribed to it. That's everyone, right. right. We all participated, but eventually, evidence and truth came to light. And so I hope with the book that we can do the same thing with other areas. So finally, what is what is the takeaway? What lessons have we not learned about methamphetamine? I want to show this chart real quick because this this blew my mind. How many people use meth in a lifetime? Twelve point three million people use meth in a lifetime, according to uh, data collected, the CDC data? Uh, no, that's the uh, SAMHSA. Uh, the SAMHSA movie, yeah, Substance Abuse Mental Health Services. How many people had used it in 2012, in the entire year, 1.2 million? How many had used it in the last month of the study? Half a million. Yeah. That's not very many people in a country of 300 million. That's right. So methamphetamine, the use of methamphetamine has always been relatively low. It's just that the hysteria uh, uh, alter, uh, is increased and decreases periodically. But the use has always been well below the use of cocaine, well be what considerably lower than the use of marijuana and other drugs. So you think we are repeating what we did in the, in the late 80s, early 90s with crack with methamphetamine right now? We, we certainly are. We punish uh, methamphetamine more harshly than any other drug other than crack um, um, and, and the hysteria when we start to see things like the meth mouth there's virtually no evidence for like this dental decay that we see that p these pictures that people show really there's 
virtually no evidence. So when we think about methamphetamine, think about Adderall. Adderall is the detention deficit disorder drug right. that a lot of college students yep. take. Yep. Uh, same drug. Nobody's talking about. It's not the same drug. It's the exact same drug. The only difference is that methamphetamine has a methyl group attached to it, but we did a study in which we, uh, along with other people, in which we uh, tested the effects of a drug like Adderall compared to methamphetamine. They produced identical effects. They, they are almost identical chemically in terms of the chemical structure. Uh, they're the same effect. And so but we have these wildly different